Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We've been talking out of uh, the greatest sermon that was ever preached, and that was Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And um, been uh, trying to bring out some, some of the truths and uh, deep into those things. In Matthew chapter number 5, we looked there of how Jesus showed that He had fulfilled the law and how He came to, uh, came to fulfill the law. And uh, that He showed that the law is something that uh, is not obeyed only externally, but it's obeyed internally. And He showed that uh, we need more than just outward uh, conforming to the rules that God has made to have salvation. Uh, we have to have a perfect heart. And because He concluded chapter number 5, be ye therefore perfect as your Father in Heaven is perfect. And so some commentators, and I've read commentaries about the Sermon on the Mount, that Jesus does not uh, in, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, but I see the Gospel just all over it. Uh, because in this verse, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, although he's talking about uh, trusting your Heavenly Father for what He can provide, the one thing that uh, we need at the very first from God, more than uh, health or more than life or shelter or food or anything else, we need salvation. That's the greatest need that anybody could ever have, and to be part of the kingdom of God, or to be in the kingdom of God, you must be saved. In fact, that's what the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is, is showing, is that it is within us, and it's the Spirit of God performing the work of salvation in us. And so, to be a good kingdom citizen, we must be born again, or, or rather to be a kingdom citizen at all. And so, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. It's the righteousness of God that we need. And the righteousness of God is more or greater than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees because we saw that uh, unless your righteousness exceeds or goes above the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. And so what we're going to look at tonight in Matthew chapter 6 again is it has to deal with those who are saved or those who are kingdom citizens but the motivation of a kingdom citizen. Now in Matthew chapter number 5 he showed, I think in, in this respect, showing uh, uh, to be saved uh, you must have God's righteousness. Chapter number uh, 5 and the verses over there show that you know, we cannot uh, uh, fulfill the law in the way that Christ did in a perfect way. And where we think we have uh, not done anything wrong against God, or maybe we have not sinned, we dig a little deeper. As Jesus said, uh, you know, it, it's written of old time uh, that, uh, you know, thou shalt not kill. But if you're angry uh, with someone, you have committed murder already in your heart. Or uh, if you've lusted, you've committed adultery and those things. So where we think we are innocent with God, or maybe we haven't sinned against God, uh, what we find out is that according to Christ in our heart, uh, we have sinned, okay? That we are not perfect, that we need God's righteousness. But then on the other hand, here in Matthew chapter 6, He shows us good things. Things in which we may have uh, a, a, a something to boast about, or things in where uh, we might trust in. So it's not only uh, it's not only our sin that would condemn us to hell uh, or prevent us from coming to God for salvation and trusting in His righteousness. It's also our own righteousness. It's also um, our our trust in what we can do. Uh, maybe it's our, our trust in, and Jesus gives three examples here of things that many people might be trusting in. Uh, the first, He talks about the giving of alms. The second, He talks about prayer. And the third, He speaks of fasting. 
Now, these three religious actions uh, are not something that only the Jews took part in, okay? There's uh, people, Jew and Gentile both, that would uh, do these things and identify by doing these things that I am religious. Many people uh, will tell you how religious they are by talking about the way that they give, well, by talking about the charity that they uh, contribute to, or maybe talking about the prayer that they pray, or even talking about fasting and things of that nature. And so there's many religions uh, throughout the world, not just Christianity, but religions that teach the giving of alms. They teach charity or hospitality. Islam teaches hospitality and charity to be done at, uh, during the time of Ramadan. The Jews, obviously, they taught these things because Jesus is speaking to a predominantly Jewish audience. And he's talking about these things in which they were doing and they were uh, uh, supposed to be doing. Doing. And then you have all the different types of Christian denominations and Christian sects that believe in doing these things, uh, giving of alms and prayer and fasting as well. But then also there's even native tribal religions which teach uh, these things of sorts in, in many ways as well. Each religion, though, they teach uh, the who or the what or the where and when they're required to do these things, whether they're required to give or whether they're required to pray and how to pray and when to pray and how to fast and when to fast and what to do and, and all of those things. And so it becomes another segment of that law or that ritual in what we do. And Jesus here, he's trying, I believe, to teach that there's a different motivation for all of these things. There's, uh, as we spoke, uh, have, are going to see tonight, there's this giving of alms and what that is. And then there's prayer. And uh, everyone, it seems, uh, prays to someone or something. And uh, different religions, they all pray and many in different ways. And then there's, again, the fasting that uh, Jesus is going to clarify and talk about. And fasting is taught in Scripture. It's taught in the Old Testament, taught in the New Testament. There's many religions that teach about fasting in different forms. And even today, there's secular uh, movements and secular teaching about fasting just for your health and, and uh, the physical benefits of, of that. But here Jesus, he's getting down to the meat and potatoes of it all. He's getting down to the heart of the matter. And again, the, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. And uh, when, in chapter 5, when he's talking about the different commands and the different uh, laws that are there, it really has to do with our heart and pointing us to Christ. And then again, Jesus is going to show us that the, the conflict and that the motivation here is our heart as well. And so there's a, a, a totally different motivation for giving or almsgiving or charity and so forth uh, that we would have as a kingdom citizen. There's a different uh, a motivation for prayer and there's a different motivation for uh, fasting that, that Jesus is going to show for those who are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, those who are saved. Now, I want you to notice here that this passage is directed to those who are doing these things. Passage is directed to those, uh, as you see here in verse uh, chapter 6, verse number 1, "...take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them, where otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven." Jesus here, he is, t I wouldn't say he's taking for granted, but Jesus is saying that when you do alms, when you give, and when you see others in need and you do these things, do it in this manner. And, and, and therefore he also says about prayer, when thou prayest, and then also when, thou, uh, when you fast. And so this is not to those uh, directed to those who are not, but those who are giving, those who are praying, those who are fasting, those who are doing uh, you know, things that are good. And that's what Jesus is talking about. But here he's talking to those who are doing these things with the wrong motive doing these things for the wrong reason or maybe with the wrong heart. So a good question to ask ourselves possibly would be is, is do I give? Uh, do I do good unto others? Do I look for those who are in need and, and when I have the ability to do it? 
that's something that's also uh, uh, spoken about uh, in, in the Word of God. And for us as uh, believers, we are to have that uh, uh, yearning in our heart to uh, love one another and even go so far as loving our enemies. Do I, uh, the second question we should ask is, do I pray? Not just pray at church or pray before a meal, but do I really pray to the God of heaven? You know, think about it in this, in this light. There's many people that do give. If you were to ask uh, someone from a, a different religion, they would be more than happy to tell you in all the ways in which they give, possibly all the ways in which they give alms and the things that they do. They would be happy to tell you if they were a Muslim how they pray five times a day, how they lay prostrate or they, uh, they bow down and they pray uh, those five different times per day, or possibly a Jew and how they would pray three times a day, and how they would uh, re recite long prayers in their native tongue. Or maybe there's other people uh, that, that could boast of how they pray, uh, whether they are a native tribe or, or somebody near or far, and, and the things that they do and the time that they put in the prayers that they pray. But think of it this way, we have the ability as children of God, those who are saved, to pray to the God of heaven. The God who actually has ears to hear and who can hear and who can answer prayer. And He's not just the God of heaven, He is our Father. He says when you pray, pray to your Father in heaven. And so He's uh, not just the God that's out there, He's our Father. Our Father who's listening. Our Father who has the ability to hear and who has the ability to answer every prayer. Another question would be, do I fast? which is denying ourselves, denying our appetites, denying our flesh from what desires that I have so that I may draw closer to God. And so Jesus is taking uh, into account that, they, that we would be doing these things, or that the people who He's addressing are doing these things. So let's dive in here to the first question. In Matthew chapter 6, verse number 1, where He does say uh, that, uh, "...take heed that you do not your alms before men." Uh, and, and to be seen of them. There's the motive to be seen of, of men or for men to see you giving alms. That, that otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Verse 2, Therefore when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and that thy Father which seeth in secret uh, himself shall reward thee openly." Now, this, uh, uh, this passage, these uh, different things may seem like a contradiction from chapter number 5, uh, verse 14, where Jesus says, "...let your light so shine before men." that they may see your good works. And now he's saying, don't let them see. Here he's talking about uh, the motive behind this. Uh, uh, to get glory or praise of men, uh, opposed to doing what God would have us to do, and act in a manner that is Christ-like. And so there is no contradiction here. Uh, God is the one who ultimately deserves to receive all glory. Not us. And so uh, the motivation uh, would be that God would, uh, re uh, God would see what we do, and then He would receive the glory for what is done. Now, the giving of alms. Uh, almsgiving was something that was expected uh, at, uh, just as a human being uh, to see the, a need from someone uh, that someone had and to give uh, person to person unto them. Uh, almsgiving was not giving in the temple. Almsgiving was not, uh, you know, it wasn't going to your synagogue and giving an offering. Almsgiving was giving to someone in need. They would be holding out their hand. They would be uh, possibly uh, begging, or maybe they had a need and they wouldn't voice that. You would uh, be able to give to provide uh, for that person in need. Nonetheless, 
God is saying when, uh, when you do these things uh, that you are to do so in a way that does not draw attention to yourself. And so Jesus here is not forbidding the giving of alms. He's forbidding hypocrisy. He's forbidding uh, doing so in a manner that pr portrays us to be something we are not. And that's what hypocrisy is. It's portraying ourselves to be something that we are not. Now, in the negative, uh, a hypocrite would be somebody who tries to hide their sin while committing sin so that people don't see that, to portray yourself as being righteous whenever you're, in fact, sinful. All right? And we're all sinners, by the way. Uh, okay? Uh, so, in a, uh, the positive side of that, uh, which when I say positive, I don't mean hypocrisy is a positive thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, anyway, as a person trying to display righteousness, and that's what Jesus is talking about here, those who are trying to put their righteousness or their righteous works on display for others to see so that may, they might receive the glory. And that's what Jesus is saying here. When we think of hypocrisy, we often think of external actions. We think of things that are being done external. But you know what? Jesus, He is focusing on the heart. He's saying it's something that begins in the heart and it's not something uh, that is necessarily on the outside. He is judging the motive of the heart. And the motive here, uh, as far as giving alms, was to uh, do good uh, unto others that you may not be seen of men. But uh, to be hypocr have hypocrisy would be to do good so that we could be seen of men and receive that glory. But notice, Jesus is saying, direct the glory to where the glory belongs. The glory belongs to God. All glory belongs to the Lord. And so if we take glory unto ourselves, we are in God in essence. So God does not want us to uh, take from Him what belongs to Him and is due unto Him. We should render to God what belongs to Him. And that is His glory. Uh, the second, secondly here He talks about prayer. Matthew uh, 6 verse number 5. He says, And when thou prayest, Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now I think for, for you or for me or for any of us, I, I, it, that would just be a very awkward thing, okay, just to get out and pray and, and uh, you know, to even like the, the Jew, uh, 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 Orthodox Jews would have the phylacteries, those boxes, and you'd have one wrapped around your head. That would just be, that'd be weird, wouldn't it, <laughs> to do that? But that's what they would do, and uh, they would do so to be seen of men. We have examples of that, how uh, there in the temple court, Jesus said there was a Pharisee and a publican, and the Pharisee, he stood there praying uh, to God, I mean, you know, looking up into heaven and praying to God so that men could hear and see himself. And then the publican who was just uh, humble before God wouldn't even look up and he was smiting his, his chest and, and praying, Lord, uh, have mercy on me, a sinner. And uh, so anyway, it just to, to us, it doesn't really register, but I think we can see some great application from this where God is still wanting to show that that our prayer needs to be, or the majority of our praying needs to be in secret and not an open display of our holiness. Our prayer, uh, the majority of it, needs to be in, uh, in secret, personal, private. And uh, so here he's not saying uh, that we can never pray uh, in front of others and that we should not pray in front, in front of others. Obviously we do and we should. And Jesus prayed in front of people and the apostles prayed in front of people and prayers are recorded and all of these things. But what he's saying is that we should have a, a private time with God and, and the majority of our prayers need to be sincere and in secret unto the Lord and God is going to reward that openly. Genuine prayer is, is uh, shown here uh, in what it should be, in the model of what it should be. Notice he says in uh, verse number 7, 
I'm sorry, verse number 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Our, our prayer is a conversation with God. You know, I mean, it's a, a, a conversation with our Father in heaven. And uh, that's who we pray to. Uh, when we pray, we don't pray to ourselves. In fact, in that, uh, in, in, in that parable, not, not parable story, where Jesus is talking about the Pharisee, it says he prayed with himself. And so our prayer doesn't need to be with ourselves. Our prayer needs to be to the Lord. And uh, obviously that. And our prayer is not to anyone else but to God. And that's what Jesus is trying to uh, uh, relate to, to the people here is that our prayer is, is talking unto our Father in heaven. And so Matthew chapter 6, verse number 7, notice he says about our prayer is that it needs to be genuine. Verse number 7, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye need of before ye ask him. And so our prayer is, is supposed to be a conversation with God. Not a, a repeti repetition or a mon mantra or something that we're just repeating. And I think we understand that, that our, our prayers is not something to be that where we're just repeating uh, words or where we're repeating phrases or even uh, repeating what's going to be given after this, uh, but that we're, we're really talking to God in a thoughtful way. In fact, the, the word here for repetition, uh, vain repetition, means without thinking or without thought. And so when we pray, really we need to be thinking. And we need to be uh, 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 praying, uh, thought-provoking prayers, and uh, uh, praying with thought unto the Lord. But Jesus, He gives us a model in how we should pray. And that's what this is. It's often called the Lord's Prayer, but really it's a model of how we should pray. Here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8 through 13. And so we've, uh, maybe, maybe you have this memorized, but let's go ahead and read here in these verses. Uh, chapter number 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Every time we pray, we don't need to pray these exact words. Would you agree with that? All right, I think we understand that every time we pray, we don't need to pray the Lord's Prayer. And obviously, it's, a, um, it's not something that we have to, you know, pray like so many, so the Catholics call these Our Fathers. <laughs> we don't need to pray these over and over and over again whenever we sinned or done something wrong, okay? But this is a model of prayer, and, and uh, every time that we pray, though, uh, it would be good to pray in, in an element of this prayer, to have, you know, part of our prayer contain uh, something of this. Now, I think every time that we pray, we don't have to make sure we pray uh, according to all this, but I, I think every time we pray, we should contain at least some of this. Uh, but let's look at these things uh, first of all. When we pray, it's, it's uh, foremost and first of all about relationship. Prayer is all about relationship. When we talk to uh, someone in our home, our family, a friend, uh, a coworker, anybody, it all has to do with relationship, right? Well, when we talk to God, it has to do with relationship with Him. We're talking to our Father. Our Father, uh, and, uh, and we need to remember that, that we're talking to our Father. And so sometimes we can pray, and we can, just, we can just talk to God, and we can, you know, know that He's our Father. And we can share our, our, our heart with Him, and we can open up our heart to God. He already knows it, but we can talk to the Lord, and we can uh, uh, partake in that relationship with Him. 
Well, another uh, area of this element of prayer is, is faith, which art in heaven. You know, heaven is real and God is real. And we know that He's real and we trust Him uh, because we have His Word. And faith comes by the Word of God. Really, our prayers uh, are, are, are best whenever we pray the Word of God. And uh, when, when our prayers are biblical and, and when we are thinking. And I think that's what Jesus was getting to. But then there's that element of worship. Hallowed or holy be thy name. And, uh, you know, understanding that God is holy and, and that we worship the Lord and we worship who He is and uh, uh, for what He is when we pray. But then there's also expectation. Expectation. Thy kingdom come. Expecting God uh, is, is working on our behalf and that we're, God is, is for us and that God uh, is going to use us and do something with us. And then submission, thy will be done. Submitting ourselves to God's will. God, thy will be done. And that's what Jesus prayed there in the garden. Not my will, but thine be done. And so that, that is a, uh, an element of our, uh, uh, that should be of our prayer. God, your, your will be done. When we're praying, we're not commanding God to do anything. When we're praying, we're not, <clears throat> we are not making uh, God do anything. We're requesting that God would. We're praying, and the word pray means to ask. And so we're asking God. And, uh, and then petition. Give us this day our daily bread. God, I need your word. And Lord, provide for me this day in which uh, only you can provide. I need you. And then there's confession. Confession. Forgive us our debts. It says in the book of Luke, forgive us our trespasses. And so understanding that we, we trespass against God or we are a debtor against the Lord when we sin and we need to come to Him confessing our sin. And then compassion as we forgive our debtors. Understanding that uh, the Lord, He counts uh, unto us what we count unto others. When we give forgiveness, God, He relates that to us as well and uh, in, 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 this, in like manner. And then dependence, depending on Him. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. God, deliver us from this temptation. And, uh, and, and so that's, that's an, another element of our prayer. And then acknowledgement. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so in our prayer to have these elements of, of, of our prayer, uh, I think not only makes it scriptural, but, but it, it makes it where uh, we can, uh, can pray in, in a way that is uh, understandable, in a way that is blessed by God. In fact, Jesus told us to pray in this way. And so what's most important is that we get a hold of God, <laughs> that we fellowship with our God. What's most important, that we get what we want? No. <laughs> But that we fellowship with God, that we worship the Lord, that we confess uh, our, our need to depend upon Him, and that we do. And so, when we look at uh, that, this model prayer that Jesus gave, and uh, you say, well, is that it? Is that the key? Yeah, I mean, that's it. <laughs> that we just need to pray and continue in prayer. Luke chapter 11, verse number 1, uh, it, it says, It came to pass, this is Luke 11, 1, It came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So you got the disciples there. This is, uh, I don't know if this is before or after. You know, it, it, it's, it's Luke chapter 11. It's a different time frame than the Sermon on the Mount. And so we have a disciple asking uh, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Well, I think Jesus already taught him how to pray, right? And so he tells him the same thing. In Luke chapter 11, verse 2, he says, pray in this manner, our Father which art in heaven. And he tells them the exact same way to pray. He tells them the, the exact same thing to do, call upon God. But then he adds to it and he says, be persistent in your prayer. He gives them some examples there in, in our prayer and how we ought to pray to be persistent and, uh, and praying for God's will to be done and just, and just keep on uh, praying and, uh, and, and pray uh, for God's will. 
will and in God's will for that to be done. And so God wants us to cry out to Him from our heart. And uh, God, He will answer. He's promised that He would, and He'll do so in the right way at the right time. And so here in, in Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus, he's, he, he's trying to point our heart uh, in the right direction to pray. Not as the Pharisees would, uh, to be seen of men, but to really have fellowship with our Father, which is in heaven. And then the last thing that, that uh, Jesus is going to address is the issue here of fasting. Fasting is something that the Jewish people would uh, uh, take part in. Uh, they would do so uh, throughout uh, the year. There would be time of feast. There would be time of fast. There would be time in which they would uh, do, uh, do this very thing. Now, again, the motive was not to be seen of men or to receive glory of men. So let's look in verse number 16 and see what Jesus says. Moreover, when ye fast... Be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly." And so Jesus is talking about when uh, they would fast, not to be as, the, as he calls the hypocrites, the Pharisees. What they would do is they would disfigure their faces. They would make themselves to look as though they were fasting. It would be like, hey, brother, I'm fasting today. You need to pray for me. <laughs> you know, I'm not feeling very well. I'm fasting. I'm doing things for God. Or it could be, you know, I'm praying. I, I, you know, I was just been up all night in prayer. Or, you know, uh, woe is me. I've been giving to God or I've been giving to others. You know, just look how good I am. You know, we see Jesus. He's confronting these things here. And to us, it may seem like, uh, you know, it, it, it may seem like this is somewhat foolish. But you know what? We can do and get caught in that same trap of look at me. And maybe sometimes it may not be uh, for everyone else to look at me, but for those who are saved, it could be God, look at me. God, look what I'm doing. God, you know, acknowledge what I'm doing and either bless me or God, do this for me. I've done this thing. You know, as far as the, the publicans, or not the publicans, the Pharisees, and, and their motivation, it was to receive glory from men. But in the same token, it, uh, prayer, fasting, uh, almsgiving, these are not things that we would do, good things that we would do to somehow leverage ourselves with God. God, I've been giving, or God, I've been praying, or God, I've been doing this. No, it's all about our heart. And we started out with the verse, Matthew 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's the motivation for everything. That's the motivation for praying, for giving, for charity, for, uh, for fasting, for all of anything that we could do uh, uh, for God or in His name, we would be doing because we're doing it for the Lord, for His glory, for the love that we have for Christ, the love of Christ is what constrains us and, uh, and would motivate us to serve God or uh, uh, suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ or to uh, pray or any of these things. And so here in these verses, we're not forbidden by Jesus to pray or give or fast or work for the Lord in public or, or, or whatnot. We are instructed to do these things, but we're to do so in a manner that does not bring us glory, but in a manner that brings all the glory to God, brings all the glory to God. We're not, uh, we are not to, uh, you know, like be the, uh, that, that source of light. We're to be the reflector. We are to reflect the, the light of Christ and to point to point those unto the light. And then last of all, what we're going to see here in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 
as he says here, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. First off is seek ye. It, you know, here is a command that Jesus is giving. And uh, he is saying that uh, what we need to do is, that is uh, the priority above all things is to seek him. Seek the Lord. Seek God. And, uh, and seek God in whatever it is that we might do. If the Lord is put in our path or in our way, uh, someone in need, as in the, the case of alms or uh, giving, uh, we, we should seek first uh, what God would have us to do. Seek God as to what we should do because God is putting us in that situation. We should pray with the same manner in seeking the Lord. Pray not because we are wanting something, not because we uh, have needs in which we do have needs, and God has told us to bring our needs to Him because He knows what we need before we even ask. But the great motivation is to seek Him. To seek Him. And He says that we have to do the seeking. We have to do the seeking. So whatever it might be, as Jesus has given some examples here uh, of, of praying, fasting, giving, and so forth, we are the ones that, uh, that have the burden to do the seeking. To seek first. And that is that this must be the priority. First, we need to seek what? The kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. It's not our righteousness on display. It's not our righteousness on display when we give. It's not our righteousness that needs to be on display when we pray or when we fast or whatever it may be. It is the righteousness of Jesus Christ that needs to be on display. In fact, it's the righteousness of Jesus Christ in which we need. Because praying, fasting, giving, not one of these things could ever give us the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Doing these things that are good, that we would say are good works, cannot give us God's righteousness. It cannot purchase our salvation, get us closer to God. What can get us closer to God? It's, uh, it's having His righteousness. It's seeking Him first, having a relationship, right relationship with God. And so uh, that's the message tonight. There's seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Father, thank you so much for your word. I do pray that you will help us uh, all to seek you first, seek you daily. And uh, first of all, Lord, that if anyone under the sound of my voice uh, does not know you as their Savior, maybe they're confused and trying to, uh, trying to do good things in order to uh, have, have righteousness. Uh, God, it's not the good things that we do that purchase salvation. It's, it's simply a gift in receiving the gift of uh, your son, Jesus, as he died on the cross and rose again for us. God, I just pray that you'll help us to follow you, to fellowship with you, and to love you more and have the right motive uh, as we do what you've called us to do in being salt and light in this world. So we pray uh, that you'll help us through the rest of this week, and uh, God, that you would use us, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen.